Today, I'll be looking at the top 10 LEGO Star Wars sets based off the Phantom Menace. Now, there are roughly 40 sets based off of the movie so far, but today I'll be narrowing it down to the top 10, or at least the top 10 in my opinion. So starting right away at 10, I have the 7155 Trade Federation AAT. This set was released in 2000 for $20. And I know this might sound a little weird, but I honestly think this is one of the best AAT builds. I know there's a few too many exposed studs, and you can definitely tell the age on it, but looking at it from a scale perspective and overall shape, I think this one captures it probably the best. So despite being an older set, I had to get it on this list somehow, albeit at the bottom spot. Plus a big knock against this set is it only has two minifigs included, and it's just two B1 battle droids, which is pretty darn bad. The set was only $20 when released, but having only two battle droids is, it's beyond words. If they released a set like this today, boy, there'd be backlash. So despite the build being very good, especially for the time, having only two B1 battle droids accompanying it is pretty lame, and I can't put it higher on the list than 10. The next one I got at number 9 is the 75058 MTT. This is the one that released in 2014, and it released for $90. Now this one was pretty small, especially compared to the 2008 one, and that's got to be why it's so low on this list. Now despite its small size, it does come with some really cool figures. We got Qui-Gon Jinn, Obi-Wan, and a Naboo Guard Captain, as well as a good amount of battle droids. Also included is a Stap Spear, which was also a great inclusion considering we see it in the movie. Going back and checking out the MTT though, it does look good for its size, it's just that size doesn't allow the main play function of the MTT and main function in general, which is carrying troops, it doesn't allow it to really do its full job. In the movie, when it releases all the B1 battle droids, there are like, I couldn't even tell you how many there were in there, but there was a ton, a lot more than what's included in this set. So while the size of the vehicle isn't really an issue, it does have a negative impact on the main play function of the set. In the eighth spot is the 9499 Gungan Sub. Now, I have a feeling this one isn't going to be a very popular pick, but I actually really like this set. This set released in 2012 for $70. That price tag is pretty gross, and that's kind of why it's lower on the list. But I honestly just really like the Gungan sub for some reason. I think it's really different from other LEGO Star Wars sets, and I don't know why, but I just really like it for that reason. I think they did a really good job capturing it, and it's a really fun set. The minifigs are also really good here. You have a Jar Jar figure, which he's probably the weakest one. He just doesn't have that much detail to him. Accompanying him though are of course Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon Jinn. Both look good. The fourth figure in this set has gone up exponentially in price as this is their only appearance. It's Queen Amidala in her iconic red dress. This figure is awesome and I can't believe it hasn't been made again. These figures are honestly a big reason of why I'm able to put it on this list despite that crazy price tag. Seventh is the 75169 Duel on Naboo. This set released in 2017 for $25, and it's a pretty good deal for that price. The three minifigs that accompany this set are Qui-Gon, Obi-Wan, and Darth Maul, of course, which is really the only lineup you could have. And what accompanies them is a good build that allows for both play and display ability, honestly. Now, it wasn't necessarily thought of first for display, but you definitely can. The Duel of the Fates is honestly just such an awesome fight, so having this set so you can recreate that scene is just really great for $25. My next set on the list at number 6 is the 75092 Naboo Starfighter. This set released in 2015 for $50. Now of course you have the Naboo Starfighter there, but you also have a crazy amount of side builds. You got a bunch of stuff to decorate the Hainer and just around the N1. Which most of it is unnecessary I will say, but it is kind of fun. There are also two droidicas included which I really love that choice because of course you can recreate the iconic scene when Anakin gets in and accidentally takes off and shoots the droidicas to save everyone. There's also two normal battle droids and one battle droid commander in this set, as well as R2-D2, young Anakin, a Naboo pilot, and Obi-Wan. That's a pretty darn good lineup. 
So despite the somewhat higher price tag for just the Naboo Starfighter, I feel like they add enough to make you feel like you're getting your money's worth. Plus the Naboo Starfighter just looks so good. In the middle of the list at number 5 is the 7663 Sith Infiltrator. This set was released back in 2007 for $30. Now with how many times LEGO's done this set, you'd think they have the look down pretty good. But honestly, they don't. This is probably the best one they've ever had. And it's pretty interesting because almost every iteration of this ship just looks so different. They always try something new every time and, and most of the time I don't think it works, which is again why I state that this one I think is the best looking ship. Especially when you consider it's only $30, whereas those other ones are normally a lot more. Now I will say the caveat to that price tag is that it only includes one minifigure. And that one minifig is Darth Maul, but honestly, that's okay. It's not what you want, it's not ideal, but for that price point for this set that's typically a lot more, I think we can make a little exception on the minifig department. Our fourth spot is taken by the 7962 Anakin Skywalker and Saboba's Pod Racers. This set was released back in 2011 and it retailed for $90. For that, as the name implies, you got Anakin and Saboba's Pod Racers, as well as five minifigs three of which are all super cool looking aliens. The pod racers themselves though are just really fun and the main selling point of the set. Obviously pod racing was such a huge scene from that movie. I think it makes both just a great display and if you're a kid it's just really fun to play with and race them. It's not just the builds, the minifigs are quite cool too. So Boba, he's really good looking. So is Wado. They both are just gr have great molds and excellent detail. And then you even got a roadie in here with Anakin's one friend. I think his name is Wald. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm not sure, but even he's a cool inclusion. Then besides those, you got Anakin dressed up and ready to pod race and Obi-Wan Kenobi. This is just a really good set. I'd say the only slight maybe knock is the price might seem a little high. It's not that far on a reach. It's just enough that you kind of look at it and go, hmm. Third is another N1 Starfighter, of course, because it's an awesome ship. This one though is the 7660 Naboo N1 Starfighter with Vulture Droid. This one released in 2007 for $30. I know what you're thinking. That's insane when you can consider the one I just put on the list was I think $50 and it included just the N1 and a bunch of other little side builds. And then you tell me this one's 30 with the Vulture Droid and the N1. I know, this one's just such a better deal, and honestly just such a good deal in general. 30 bucks for both these ships is really cool, and allows for so much playability. For just $30, normally these 2-in-1 packs are normally so much more, especially nowadays. Now there are only 3 minifigures included, and that is R2-D2, Anakin Skywalker, and a Naboo fighter pilot. However, at this reduced price, this isn't really a con. Although I will say all these figures are pretty basic given the age of the set. Our runner up for this list is another classic. It's the 7665 Republic Cruiser. The set released back in 2007 for $90. This is honestly just one of the best looking LEGO Star Wars sets. The red is just so good looking and sticks out amidst all the normally, you know, gray ships you have from LEGO Star Wars. Now obviously there is some age here. And I would absolutely love a remake of this set. Overall, I'd say the build still holds up fairly well. This set even included a carry handle, believe it or not. With it too, you also got some super cool minifigs. You got a green astromech droid, as well as a Republic captain and a Republic pilot. And then of course, Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan. So with a solid lineup of minifigs, this set is just so good and it proves why it's a classic. Like sometimes you can tell sets are totally dated, and this one you can kind of tell that too, but even with that, I still keep this one on display because it's so good looking. It was honestly just an absolute stellar set, and I hope they remake it at some point. Because looking at how good of a job they did so long ago, I can only imagine what this set would look like now. Finally, at the top of my list is the 7662 Trade Federation MTT. Now I'm sure none of you are surprised by this set being at the top. It is an amazing LEGO set. Released in 2007 for $100, you definitely get your value back. This set is massive, and it includes so many battle droids, which is perfect. That's exactly what you want in this set. It's supposed to be a battle droid carrier, so give me all the battle droids. And it does that, including a couple variations of it. 
They give you the red security droids as well as one e pilot even in the blue. There's even a droidica. This is just the ultimate droid set. Now there are no other figures included unfortunately, but honestly that's fine. This build and scale is so good, but unfortunately I have a feeling we'll never see it this big again. This set is so iconic and for a good reason, because it is a great set and it easily deserves to be my number one pick. The Republic Cruiser is honestly the only one that really gave it any sort of competition, but I still ended up just having to pick this one. That completes my list of the top 10 sets from The Phantom Menace. Now I'm sure you disagree with some of my picks and where I ranked some of these sets at, so go ahead and make sure you let me know your guys' is down below. I'm sure some of you already have. I'd love to hear what your guys' top 10s are though, so please let me know down below. And I'll catch you guys later.